Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about linear models and mainly interpreting the slope as a rate of change. So we're going to say we're going to do slope and how does that look like as a rate of change. So as we have talked about, the slope is the little m and is usually the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 change in y over the change in x. The change in y is what we also call the net change. And this in turn gives us, that is the average rate of change of a function. Of a function. So we look at it, you can also think of it as the change in y over the change in x, or rise over run. Um, but when we're not in a function, we just call it the average rate of change, or sorry, when we're not in a line, we just call it the average rate of change. When you're in a line, then that's why it's called the slope. So let's look at our first example here. We're going to let f of x be equal to 2 thirds x plus 2. So this is a linear function because it has the form mx plus b. So it fits that criteria. Um, so what is the slope? Or we may ask, what is the rate of change? And the rate of change here is the slope. So the rate of change is the slope, which is 2 thirds. So one way you can interpret it, this is that for every three units, we move to the to the right, or we move on the x-axis, we move two units up on the y-axis. For every three units we move on the x-axis, we move two units on the y-axis. To be more specific, because everything is positive, we'll say for every three units we move to the right on the x-axis, we move two units up on the y-axis. But that's essentially what the rate of change is telling us. And when you graph linear functions, you can use that slope to help you find points on the line. So let's try a linear model. So a linear model is um, real-life situations that can be modeled with a line. So my second example is the amount of vibranium produced from my vibranium mine in Wakanda is modeled by the function f of x equals 200 plus 32x, where x is years since 1992. And if you've watched the movie Black Panther, you might know what happened in 1992. Um, if you haven't, I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> and f of x is measured in thousands of tons. So f of x, meaning the y values, I me are measured in thousands of tons. So what is the slope of the graph? So if you were going to graph this, so let's first look at the graph. And of f of x equals 200 plus 32x. And notice that because this is, so since 1992, so 1992 will be our year zero. So we can say this is x equals zero. So that's for the point where we started measuring the amount of vibranium being mined in Wakanda. So there's no reason for us to go any further than zero. So I will go, here's the year, the year zero is 1992. And they were 200 um, thousand tons of vibranium produced. And then you can go on from there, right? The slope is 32. And so what is the slope of the graph? So we can say the slope is 32. And so based on this, now you can, you can draw the graph of this function. So this, uh, in 1992, year zero, is going to be your y-intercept, and then it increases from there with the slope of 32. And so we don't have to graph anything below that. At what rate is the amount of vibranium produced changing? 
So notice that these are essentially the same question. What is the slope? We can just say the slope is 32. So this will be for part A. But when, when it's asking what, at what rate is the amount of vibranium produced changing, notice that this is still a rate of change. So at what rate? So we're looking, B is the rate of change of vibranium. And it is still the same 32, but because it is a rate of change, we want to attach units, units to it. So it will be 32 thousand ton, tons per year. Right, X was being measured in years and F of X was in thousands, in thousand, thousands of tons. And so they're the same thing. It's just that when you we talk about the rate of change, you want to attach units to it. Okay, so the third example is, let's look at this one. It's a little bit more involved. So distance, speed, and time. So Jacqueline leaves Detroit at 2 p.m. and drives at a constant speed, traveling west on I-90. She passes an arbor 40 miles from Detroit at 2.50 p.m. So her first task is find a linear function that models the distance in miles that she has traveled after t minutes. So paying attention to her units is important. So we're, her distance is in miles, and her t has to be in minutes. Um, so let's look at part A first. So find a linear function, then we're going to draw a graph, and then it's asking us something else. And this it has a link because it came from your textbook. Uh, so for part A, we're going to let d of t, because I want to write it as a function, be the distance traveled in minutes. So let's see what happens. So 2 p.m., let's say 2 p.m. is time zero. So 2 p.m. will be the same as t equals zero. So that means that 2.50 p.m. will be what? Right, since t is in minutes, over here it tells us t is in minutes, so 50 minutes have elapsed, so t will be 50. And now in terms of the distance, so the distance when t is 0, d was 0. Right, At time 0, at 2 p.m., she hasn't left yet. She leaves at 2 p.m., so she hasn't traveled any distance. So this gives us the point 0, 0. At 2.50, she has passed Ann Arbor 40 miles away, so the distance will be 40. So this gives us the point, let's see, T is 50 and D is 40, right? The distance is the Y value. So now that I have my two points, we can find the slope. In order to find a linear function, I need the slope and I need a point. I already have a point, well, we have two points. So, but I, this, this one is nice because this is my y-intercept, right? So if I'm going to put things in y equals mx plus b, I already know b is 0 because my y-intercept is 0, 0. So let's find the slope. So the slope is m, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 40 minus 0 over 50 minus 0 which gives us 40 over 50, which is 4 fifths. So that's our slope. So that means that our function then will be d of t is 4 fifths slope x, well, we're using t here, plus b, but b is 0. So our final answer will be the function for the distance travel is just 4 fifths t. And that will be our linear function. So notice that we can get the slope. If you want to write it as a decimal, you can. So it'll be d of t. 4 fifths is 0.8. So it'll be 0.8t. Now let's go back and look at part b. Part b is asking us to draw a graph of d. And what is the slope of this line? So we already know the slope is 0.8. And see at what speed in miles per hour is Jacqueline traveling. So let's 
Let's look at the graph first. So if I graph it, we're going to have, and again, right, we're starting at 2 p.m., so there's no reason to graph anything um, below 2 p.m., so we're going to start at 0. So, and again, t equals 0 corresponds to 2 p.m. And at 0, she hadn't traveled anywhere, and then depends how we want our scale. So she traveled 50 minutes, distance of tens. So let's try, how about we do 20, 40, 60. So these are minutes, 80, and so on. So this is T in minutes. In distance, we can go by tens. So 10, 20. If you want to go by 20s, you can as well. 40, 50, and so on. So this is distance in miles. Um, so at zero, we're at zero. At 50 minutes, so over here 50, she had traveled 40 miles. So we're going to put a dot there and then connect the lines to the best that you can. And this will be our graph. There's no need, we don't want to actually want to graph the whole line going down because we only start tracking it at 2 p.m. Right? So that will be our time zero. So there's no reason to draw anything on the negative side because we don't have any data for that. So this graph starts at zero, zero. And there's nothing beyond that, um, below that in the negative side. Time can be negative. Uh, part C is at what speed is she traveling? And while well, the speed is the rate of change of the graph, right? Um, so you might be thinking, well, we already know that. That's the slope. And at what speed is she traveling? But this question says in miles per hour. So even though we have the rate of change, the rate of change is 0.8, um, we need the speed in miles per hour. So that is the, the key thing here is that we need to convert our minutes to hours. So let me go back up here, part B. Um, the slope is 4 fifths, which is 0.8. And this is the rate of change. Right, so here, when we're at what speed is she traveling? Well, the speed is the rate of change. So she is traveling at 0.8, but remember the rate of change, we've got to put it with the units. So this will be 0.8 miles per minute. And again, to point out, the question did say to find it in miles per hour. So we just need to convert the minutes to hours. So we'll do a little dimension dimensional analysis here. So I have 0.8 miles per minute and one hour has how many minutes? One hour has 60 minutes and so now my minutes and my minutes will cancel and I will get whatever 0.8 times 60 is. And now I'll have miles per hour. And 6 times 8 is 48, so then this gives us 48 miles per hour. So that will be her rate. And now I can box that up. Right? And so, yes, her rate of change is 0.8, but that was in miles per minute. The question very specifically asked us to find the her speed in miles per hour. So that's why we have to multiply it by 60 to get it in miles per hour. And so this helps us, hopefully this helps cover linear models. And so interpreting the slope as a rate of change. Essentially what that means is once you have the slope, just attach units to it.